quite ethical and quite fun. If you are going to watch any video this year involving FIFA Ultimate Team, then I insist that it is this one. In today's video, we are going to showcase the deep-rooted relationship with gambling in FIFA Ultimate Team. If you are a parent or guardian currently watching this, then I insist that you watch it to the end. If you have a child, a son, a daughter who plays FIFA, then I recommend that you think twice. In this video, I will break down how EA preys on addiction of mainly children or young teens, artificially moving the goalpost in-game to lure and to push easily influenced people into chasing a buzz, similar to the same type of psychological feelings that you get when you bet on real-life games. The correlation of the high of packing a good player in a pack is the same as winning a bet in your accumulator on Skybet. And in the same sense that when you finally get that high, you want to get that feeling again, that feeling of winning. So what do you do? You chase the thrill, you chase the high again, and you put more money to try to win again. And all of this is happening right now and happening to a game which is registered Peggy free meaning all people age three upwards are allowed and accepted to play this game with absolutely no firewalls or restrictions to allow anyone above the age of three to put money from a bank account or PayPal onto their game to receive FIFA points. Registered by the Pan-European Game Information Federation in which on their very own website state that games that involve any type of gambling should be only registered to games 12, 15 or 18. I want you down below to tell me your experience with FIFA points. Please share this like on it, comment down below, subscribe if you want more videos like this as well. I want this to reach out to as many people as possible. If it's the young teens and children doing it right now, or the parents or guardians who are also looking after these kids. Of course, I must say, if you are 18 or above, if it is your money, then you are absolutely free to spend it however you so wish. I'm not here to baby you and tell you what you should do with your own money. Even though I may not agree with putting any money on this game, if you spend your money in moderation, then that is your own decision. I hope you guys do enjoy, and let's get into the video. As of the year 2021, EA made as a net revenue from Ultimate Team solely, just from Ultimate Team, not the actual purchase of the game, $1.62 billion. That is how much money EA has made on microtransactions. Ultimate Team, the golden geese to EA. The never-ending cycle of microtransactions attached to yearly sports-related games, which updates brand new and refreshes every single year, making it a cycle of guaranteed money throughout every time of the year. This is something that EA want to cling on to for dear life. Despite all the lawsuits that's been thrown their way, they still stand firm. I'm going to break this down. So let's start off with the basics, the context. Why would you put money on this game in the first place? And how do they advertise it and make it look so nice and so shiny? After already spending 50, 60, 70, or maybe even 90 pound on buying the game in the first place. If you are new to the concept of FIFA Ultimate Team, then I will break it down for you briefly. When you load up FIFA Ultimate Team, you start off with absolutely nothing but a bronze team, which you have certain game modes, objectives, SBCs to try to build up your team in the meantime. You can build your way up from a bronze team to a silver team and then to a gold team. And then once you have a gold team, the possibilities are endless. In previous FIFA titles, Let's say, for example, FIFA 14, one of the most popular and most recognised FIFA 
games. Across the entire year, you only have about six different types of promotion events. Promos, meaning limited time only events where certain card types are available. Back in FIFA 14, you had your weekly team of the week, such as inform cards, that's been a staple of the game since FIFA 10. Alongside that, you've also had team of the year, which matches the current FIFA Pro team of the year, in which over time this has changed to a fan vote system. Alongside that, you also had team of the season, the same similar concept, but promoting the best players across all of the major leagues in the world and minor leagues too. Alongside this, you have man of the match cards for real life performances in cup games or international games. And last but not least, legend cards, which is available for the entire year, only one type of legend card each, which was at the time one of the most glorified types of cards to get. Having one or two legends in your team was a major milestone, but because of the skill gap at this time period, you could still run with a gold team, Christ, even silver cards, and still play at a very good level because back in these days, the skill gap was more based on the actual player input than the cards themselves. So how does this release to, let's say FIFA 22? which was the latest fully released game which lasted the entire year. Well, it's a bit different. Back in the day, FIFA players were very much used to a promo every couple of weeks or months, and when it does come, it is a big major event. Comparing this to FIFA 22, I am going to break down all of the promos in this one game alone. Remember, before I do start, there were only six different types of cards back in FIFA 14, now, it is as follows. Team of the week, ones to watch, road to the knockouts, rule breakers, numbers up, Black Friday, signature signings, team of the group stage, winter wildcards, versus, headliners, warm up series, team of the year, future stars, road to the final, silver star series, foot birthday, foot fantasy, foot captains, team of the season, shapeshifters, footies, and preseason. Alongside all of these promos, you also have a Team 1 and a Team 2, alongside countless SBCs and also objectives. That is a obscene jump between what we used to get to what we have now. So why the massive shift? EA, over time, has accustomed the community to get used to content on a much regular basis. If there is no content in a single day, day by day, then the community now freaks out. They rant and they rave on social media and on Reddit saying that the game is now dead because of the reliance of promotions to keep the game fresh. Alongside this as well, Remember legend cards? Well, they're now called icons, and now there's not only one of each icon, there's now three, actually no four, actually now it's five, actually no, it's six, which is obscene. So due to this massive shift, it also has created a lot of opportunities for EA to promote these promotions to their fellow players. Not only this, but because of the level of new cards being released on a daily basis, this means that the skill gap and the value of these cards cards consistently dwindle down and the standard of your team gets also worse and worse each week. If you have the best possible team in the game, let's say in October, and then you have the best possible team in December, it cannot be any different. The price of the team would dwindle down from let's say 10 million to maybe about 2 or 3, making you lose 70% of your team's value just by existing. Because of them pumping so many new different types of cards, it shifts the player meta so much more. The meta meaning what is the most efficient way to play the game, to get the absolute most out of the game mechanics. This forces the consumer to always feel like they need to update their team to catch up to the power curve and if you fall behind you don't play too well or you dare i say take a couple of weeks off you are so behind the power curve that for you to catch up it will take hours upon hours of grinding but if you don't feel like taking that grind then there's the alternative which is dip into your pocket to skip ahead of the queue. Even if you do not spend any money at all and you play the game purely by grinding, the amount of hours that it takes is obscene. All to get players from rewards, which is all for the chance to get someone good, someone big in a pack to improve your team. 
and that is the current state of FIFA as we stand. A lot of the people I find play FIFA as it's something to do or they feel like they kind of have to because they like football and they want to scratch that football itch. EA preys and profits from this mentality, hence why they can do absolutely anything to this game for the last decade and no one cares people still buy it because they know that it is the only good football game out there for most people. Yes, there's Pez and there's Football Manager and those are great games in their own right. However, FIFA has a monopoly on licensing and marketing. It is everywhere you see on billboards to football stadiums to the official licensed team promoting them. It is the game that has the most eyes and they know that. FIFA is a game which has destroyed people's lives and it is normalized. The idea of spending money and putting it into the game is normalized because it's what has always been there. It is normalized to watch fellow content creators spend thousands upon thousands of pounds knowing that they won't get anything back of any worth because it's all for content and promoting it to people who don't know any better and are not in the same financial situation. I have reached out to countless amounts of people online, on Twitter or through email who have reached out and discussed with me their experiences with FIFA point gambling and it is is obscene and abhorrent the amount of money that people have spent and they all have one correlation they all started when they were young they all started at a young age the majority did the same thing that they go on their xbox or they go on their playstation and their parents bank account is already on there because they need the account to go and buy xbox live gold or a playstation plus membership so when it's there ready and waiting they just take out 10 pound or 15 pound or 10 pound again then maybe a 30 and it builds up all the time that they may spend 500 pounds 1000 pounds and i did the same thing i spent my dad's money without him knowing on fifa 13 when i was 14 years of age and I spent £700 in a matter of four months without even thinking about it and this is normalized and to this day I still feel the same guilt and shame that I felt that day when my dad found out and said that he would never forgive me for stealing off him because that is what I did and that is what so many kids do they steal off their own parents because they do not know any better because Packs. So I reiterate, if you are someone listening who has gone through the same experience, then I reach out to you from a place of empathy that if you have spent money on this game and you feel any ounce of shame or embarrassment, then I need you to know that you are not alone and that you can speak about this because this is the same as gambling addiction when you put money on Skybet or Ladbrokes or any other standard betting supplier and the worst part of it all is that at least they have some restrictions. But on FIFA, all you have to be is age free and you can walk through the door and spend money like you've never spent money before. So you may be thinking, what is EA's response to this situation? How do they respond on this level of critique about their microtransaction practices? This is what they had to say. This is a incredibly viral clip that happened back in 2019 in which an EA representative went in front of court. This was in UK Parliament when asked, do you believe that your loot bot system is ethical? This is their response. Do you consider loot boxes to be a, an, an ethical feature? of your games? Well, first, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was... Whatever a, term but, but, you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So, what we look at as, as surprise mechanics. Nah, um, right. But I think it's important to look at this. So, uh, if, yeah. if, you go to, if you go to a store that sells a lot of toys and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And so, it's... It's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented 
these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA, of course, is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team in our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. And we also disagree that there's evidence that shows it leads to gambling. Instead, we think it's like many other products that people enjoy in a very healthy way, uh, and like the element of surprise. This was EA Sports Vice President of Legal and Government Affairs, Kerry Hopkins. This isn't some EA chat line person. No, this is the Vice President of the Legal Affairs. This woman compared opening a Kinder egg, which you get a little tiny plastic toy inside, or a LOL toy, in which you get a tiny piece of plastic inside of that as well, and you don't know what you get. She compared that to opening packs on ultimate team of course the memes that came out of this is as good as you could imagine it wasn't attempted robbery it was a surprise withdrawal it is not kidnapping it's surprise adoption this isn't corruption it is surprise corporation it is not murder it is surprise funeral please i want you down below in comments to give me your favorite rendition be creative be as creative as you want to be about this same line they're not ets they are surprise ets the possibilities of this is endless. In recent news, published by Eurogamer on the 11th of August 2022, saying that EA sticks with the controversial loot boxes for Ultimate Team. EA statement on loot boxes reads as, we all heartedly believe that Ultimate Team and FUT packs, which have been a part of the game for more than a decade, are a part of FIFA that players love. Fans love that the game reflects the real world excitement and strategy of building and managing a squad. Giving players a choice to spend if they want to is fair. Adding, it's worth saying that spending is entirely optional in our game and we do not encourage spending over earning rewards through gameplay. FUT packs work in just the same way wherever they are paid for or earned and most players don't spend in game at all for example nine out of ten fut packs opened in fifa 22 were earned now of course i can give ea some credit i can say that as of right now this is the easiest game to get a good team ever I am not disputing that, of course, if you are a casual, it is much easier to get a very good team than what you would be able to in previous FIFAs. However, my main issue is that you can get a good team with a gold Mbappe or a, you know, decent gold players here or there, but I would like to say that there is a massive gulf of budget when you reach that upper echelon levels, which you may say is not relevant, but I like to say that it is. Because believe it or not, even though that these upper echelon players, so like the prime Ronaldos and those top pro level players, they may feel like an enigma, but when you go to a higher level of FIFA, it is truly not the case. And you find these players everywhere. Reason is, is that there is a element of pay to win. If you spend that money, then you can jump ahead of the game and get these players a lot easier. But even if you do spend money, you're not guaranteed anything. In fact, as of right now of recording, it is team of the year. So, how much money do you think it takes to get a team of the year? Well, due to my recent videos before in the past, exposing how much it does usually cost to get a team of the year, I've already done the maths. To really break it down and to nail at home how rare it really is to get one of these top players in a pack. On the first night of FIFA 22, I captured 12 different FIFA streamers and I calculated their spending habits on that first night. This was the night of team of the year attackers, so there was only three different types of cards available, which was team of the year Mbappe, team of the year Messi, and team of the year Lewandowski. Across this one night, for the chance to only pack three of these selected cards, the lowest amount was £360 and the highest spent was £3,920 in one night. Between all these 12 different content creators, they spent in one night £3,193,250 FIFA points. So I want you right now to tell me how many team years will you pack from 19,156 pounds i repeat 19156 pounds was spent in one night for only three players available from a variety of only 12 streamers 12 youtubers how many team years do you think they packed of the highest red cards in the game they packed between 
all of this for Team of the Year's from FIFA Point Packs. Four, which three was Robert Lewandowski and one being Lionel Messi Team of the Year card. That means that if you average this, it is £4,789 per Team of the Year. So, to really year all, when you are a kid and you put on £80 worth of money, which is a lot of money, you spend that £80 or £72 to get that 12,000 FIFA points. They spend this on a 100k pack. It is 2,000 FIFA points per pack. Therefore, they only open six packs. Therefore, they can spend about 72 to 80 pounds worth of packs in about three minutes. They can go through six packs in three goddamn minutes. If they drag it out, maybe 10 to just burn through money and you don't even need to think about it. So, if you are a young lad, and you see the shiny team of the years, and you think maybe you're the one, maybe you're the lucky one, a reminder to you, between £19,000, 3.1 million FIFA points spent in one night, they got only four. This is truly, truly obscene. I beg to you, if you get even a little, tiny itch, to see if maybe it's your day. I urge you, actually no, I beg you, please rethink it through. Spend that money on something that you are actually guaranteed to get. Spend it on a nice meal. Spend it on your family. Spend it on yourself. Treat yourself to a brand new game that won't try its best to drag each penny out of your bank account. And if you are a parent watching or listening to this, then I urge you to please make sure that your kids that plays this game knows the value and the odds which is insanely low and minuscule i can't even tell you because technically they do tell you this is how they get around it because they give you the pack odds in the game but they give you a vague amount when it says how often it is to get a team of the year they say a less than less than one percent what does that mean does it mean 0.0001 or does it mean 0.99? It's a big difference. But because they technically disclose this information, that's how they get out of it. Including this, in the description, they say that you are guaranteed a certain amount of gold cards or special cards or consumables. So technically, you do get what they say you're going to get. You're going to get a 100k pack with 24 red gold players you do get 24 rare gold players, or maybe special cards, I guess, which isn't guaranteed. This is how they legally get around this, that technically, they do say you're going to get 24 gold players. Just no idea what you're going to get. Next up, and I know that this is a long video, and I do apologise. However, because of the gravity of this topic, I want to give it my full effort and break down all angles here. Because I don't want to do another video on this again. I want this to be the be all and end all. This is all you need to know about this awful practice that EA Sports has implemented into their video games. So... The link between gambling and loot boxes. There is a correlation between you putting money on FIFA points and then you being more likely to go into the world of gambling and form a gambling addiction. New research has robustly verified a link between loot boxes and problem gambling. Researchers at the universities of Plymouth and Wolverhampton said loot boxes are structurally and psychologically akin to gambling. As we all know, it is found that large numbers of children are opening loot boxes. And of course, loot boxes is not only exclusive to EA, of course, multiple other games have a similar feature, but EA is by far the worst example of the loot box system. EA do insist that you can acquire all items without spending any money, which of course, in a ideal world, Maybe, but you are still playing with massive amount of grind, massive amount of hours, massive amount of probabilities, and even if you spend every hour of every day, there is no guarantee that you can get the best team in the game. New research found by both of the studies at both these universities, commissioned by the Gamble Away Charity, found that 93% of children who play video games, up to 40% have opened loot boxes. It is also found that 12 out of the 13 studies on loot boxes establish 
ambiguous connections to problem gambling behavior. The report says that many games, including FIFA Ultimate Team, use a psychological nudge to encourage people to buy loot boxes, such as a fear of missing out, FOMO, if you may have heard before, on limited time items or special deals. This can be clearly seen in FIFA Ultimate Team with all these promotions and SBCs, which regularly trades on fear of missing out by releasing powerful, coveted cards in limited quantities or for limited periods of time. Another study here by BR Football doing a survey on members of the FIFA community. One of the questions was, have you spent more than you can realistically afford on FIFA points? 80.82% said no, 19.18% said yes. Let me remind you here, 19%. So pretty much one in every five people have spent more than they should realistically afford on FIFA points. That is a scary number. That is huge. One in every five people are spending more than what they should do on this game. Another question in the survey was, how much do you think you've spent on all FIFA games put together? And as you can see here, there's 8% for more than $1,000, 3.6 for over $2,000, another 3% for $3,000, 2.99 for over $5,000, and even 2.17 with, with over $10,000. And this is from a survey from 1,352 people. So just to work out that number of how many people have put over $10,000 on FIFA in their life, in their own opinion, that is 67 people. 67 people have spent over $10,000 and that is only from a survey of 1,352 people. So imagine this to a much more wider scale. You get 10,000 people, you get 495 people who have spent over 10 grand in this game. And then when you think of it like that, when it comes to the entire world, then you can have a pretty good idea when it comes to how they get 1.67 billion generated revenue from FIFA Ultimate Team. It's very easy to imagine how that comes up. Dr. James Kloss, the senior researcher at the University of Plymouth, saying, our work has established that engagement with loot boxes is associated with problem gambling behaviors with players encouraged to purchase through psychological techniques such as fear of missing out we have also demonstrated that at-risk individuals such as problem gamblers gamers and young people make disproportionate contributions to loot box revenues the gamble aware chief Zoe Osmond also added that the research has revealed that a high number of children who play video games also purchase loot boxes and we are increasingly concerned that gambling is now part of everyday life for children and young people. I need to remind you the feeling of what it is like to open a pack and to get someone good in it because it is, in my own opinion, the exact same feeling as getting a big win from an accumulator on Skybet, for example. The same feeling from getting that big win is that you feel like you've earned it and that high that you feel feels like you've won the game, you've cheated the system almost and that you are ahead of the game. So what do you do when you get that high? You want to chase that buzz again. The same concept as when gambling addicts get that big win and they go and think that okay this is easy i can just do it again they make one thousand pound or something and then they spend that one thousand pound trying to make even more but they start losing so then they start betting even more to try to get back what they used to have get back to break even and then they keep losing even more and then they get desperate to try to get back to what they once had to chase that buzz and there's a concept that i've heard many times with many addicts which is the same thing with fifa which is a concept of you can't tend on a loss and the same thing can be said for fifa you can't tend on a bad pull you can't tend on a bad pack you need to end on a good pack and then you keep on chasing that good pack which by the way there's not many good packs on fifa so you keep opening in the same way that you're chasing that win and what if you get a small win it's not enough for you so you keep going for that big win and you try to chase that big win until you have lost all your money and then what are you left with that feeling of shame that feeling of guilt that feeling of embarrassment that feeling of being cheated and that you tell yourself that you had it, you had the money, and it's all because of you and your own choices that, that you've been played, and then you stop blaming yourself, then you start hating yourself. And this is the feeling that so many people feel when they open packs, and they get nothing out of it, and then they justify to themselves that, oh well, at least I got fodder, at least I got fodder so that I could do some SBCs. They justify themselves because they do get some packs, they do get some players, so then they can keep playing the game and then try their luck again for more packs in the SBCs, but this time with the players that they packed, which they didn't really want, but they can kind of use for the SBCs. This is a cycle that so many people, and I, I genuinely want you to know how many people this is. This isn't a small minority. I am begging to you to understand this is so much more than what you could ever imagine. 
and they all feel the same way. I'm sorry that this part is quite dark, but it's to really hit home that there is a very similar feeling and a very similar cycle between putting your money on a game like FIFA on a loot box system in comparison to going on Skybet and putting in accumulators to try to chase that big win. It's the same thing. But there's one key difference, isn't there? And we both know what it is. On Skybet and other standard betting sites, you at least have some restrictions of being 18 or higher. But on EA's loot box system, you've got to be age free. If this doesn't make you feel sick, then I don't know what would. So what has EA done legally to try to counteract all of these claims? Well, EA has already been forced to change the way FIFA works in response to the government intervention. In January 2019, EA stopped selling FIFA points in Belgium, following government pressure over loot boxes. The Netherlands Gambling Authority have also declared loot boxes illegal because they are considered a game of chance and therefore violate the country's gambling act. The Dutch authorities ended up issuing EA with a fine up to 10 million euro over loot boxes in fifa however a year and a half later through the court system it has found out to be overturned ea has tried to do to try to counteract this is that they've actually put a limit of how much you could put onto the game which is hidden away in the settings the only issue with this is the fact that it might as well be a paper lock because you can put a limit on how much you put on the game however you can easily just unlock it instantly without any effort whatsoever to then just put money back in it's again another weak fix that really solves nothing to try to to make it look like they actually care about their consumers. In the last 24 hours, I have asked people to give me their experiences with fewer points, and because I've received so many, I simply cannot put them all in this one video, but I can show you a screenshot here of the amount of people that reached out to me. There is over 100 people who have reached out to me telling me their experiences with this and it is awful it is awful reading people who have all started at a young age that is the main correlation they all started before they were even 18 they can't drink they can't drive and they can't even gamble in real life in actual standing publishers but in ea's loot box system they can enter at any age and because they have no concept of money and they don't understand how much 50 pound is they just take their parents bank accounts without them even knowing and that is one massive thing that people do. To round off this video, I joined a call with the man Johnny P, who has had not just experience with spending countless amounts of money on this game in his past, and has told his story on the likes of BBC News, but is actively going across the country right now in seminars to work towards putting an end to loot box gambling in the UK. If you would like to speak to Johnny and talk to him about your experiences to help his great cause, then his link is down below in the description. Is at on Twitter is Johnny P7 underscore. His story you can find on JCC's channel about gambling for children which is the video that you can see on screen which will also be down below in the description and this is a conversation that we had how easy do you think it is for a young person a vulnerable young person to get caught up in the world of um, the current loot box system created by ea i think it's really easy i think there's deliberate steps that are put in by ea for example many years ago um, you used to kind of buy each pack individually where you'd see how much money you were spending. And even if we look at a level where now, I wonder if people ask themselves, why do we buy FIFA points rather than why don't we buy each pack? And it's because it kind of dilutes that process for people and makes it easier to lose track of the money that's being spent. I think in the case always of children, it can be difficult kind of before people are fully mature to really appreciate. And then we have as well, the fact that loot boxes are addictive there's a process with gambling which obviously has a scientific basis behind why gambling is addictive why it's so dangerous for people it really means that spending can escalate in a way that is dangerous and can go really out of control quite easily what steps specifically do you think that they do to to lure them in i mean there's crazy stuff on this ea normally defends themselves if you see any articles about this they'll normally put out something which says that spending fifa points and spending money is optional when playing an ultimate team at the same time there was that smith's toys catalog a couple of years ago where the there was the advert for Ultimate Team, and I think it was like step one, load up FIFA. Step two, buy FIFA points and spend money on packs. So literally out of three steps to play in the game, they said step two was spending money. But apparently it's not an essential part. There was actually a document that was leaked by a whistleblower uh, that was asked to comment on um, for I think Canadian BBC a couple of years ago. And that whistleblower from the company had come forward because there was a, a briefing which 
was just completely labelled all roads lead to foot. And it's that idea of basically driving people where possible to the casino floor. I mean, I think everyone that plays FIFA practically knows this, but they want people on their moneymaker. They don't want people on career mode. They don't want people on online seasons. They want people on Ultimate Team, and it's why you, there was those messages for people that play career mode. I mean, I don't know if it still happens, but certainly a few years ago, where it says, hey, we can see that you enjoy playing career mode. We think you'd enjoy playing Ultimate Team. Here's a few free packs to get you started, that kind of thing. EA have every incentive to drive people um, towards playing Ultimate Team. A lot of people may struggle to see the relevance and the correlation between spending money on FIFA and on packs to correlating that to actual online betting and betting on real life football. How would you explain to people why there is a strong correlation between when you're young, putting money on a game like FIFA, to then becoming 18 and diving, diving into the world of online betting? Yeah, so it comes down to this, and that is exchanging money for a randomized chance of winning. I talk about the addictive process that takes place in people's brains when they gamble because that is an incredibly powerful feeling for people. I don't know about you, Liam, but I remember the first time I got a great player on the team. I remember what day it was. Uh, I remember it being a Sunday morning when I got Vincent Company in a pack on like FIFA 13. And I remember what I did, who I went and told straight away because that feeling was so, so strong to me at that time of what would in betting terms be my first big win. And actually that's something that we see in gambling, particularly in what goes on to be problematic gambling behavior, people that, that you know suffer from problem gambling is that experience of that first big win. It wasn't about you know playing the game of FIFA that was addictive. I was addicted to the buzz and the rush of chance, the rush of luck, and that's what PAX gives you. And that rush of luck is the exact same thing whether you're sat there spending 20 quid on FIFA points or whether you're sat there winning a sports bet, really. It's ultimately that same feeling, that same process in the brain that happens. Just to have your thoughts on the very viral clip um, from back in 2019 um, with the EA vice president, I believe, of um, law and government about the, the term surprise mechanics. And of course, that's a massive meme as it should be completely justified of the comparison from spending money on FIFA and opening packs in comparison to LOLs or Kinder Eggs from a person with experience like your own and with your knowledge of it, why is that such an obscene thing to say? I always have to stress, those decisions were mine, I own them, they were my mistakes. I spent that money and I've learned from that experience. My experience with FIFA packs took me to a point where my mum said to me that I'd broken her heart with the money that I'd spent. And then I think about that and the impact on my life at a point which was already an incredibly difficult point in my life. And then the comparison to Kinder Eggs. I mean, words fail really to talk about to talk about how absurd that really is. I have to mention as well the fact that it's not uncommon that I hear stories in kind of my work and what I do online talking about this issue from people of teenagers that literally attempt to take their own lives as a result of spending on loot boxes or teenagers that have taken their own lives because of loot boxes. And then I think about comparing it to Kinder Eggs and yeah, I'd, I'd fail to put into words what I think about that, but it shows just how out of touch they are um, really with the harm that's the harm that's being caused. I find with a lot of people that they put money in the game as almost as a way to show off, predominantly to family or mainly to friends, that you are almost trying to one up on each other to get the best pack look. How impactful do you think that environment is to a lot of young people? I remember when I was at school in like IT lessons, practically everyone when the teacher wasn't looking was on the Ultimate Team web app and opening packs and everyone at break times would be on their phones and talking about packs or watching pack openings and you know I mean at that point it practically consumed my life even though I was only ever allowed to play on my console on weekends but I'd be spending the rest of the time kind of watching watching videos or being on web apps or whatever and I think the social the social factor is a kind of huge influence here like you talk about the fact that you get those bragging rights essentially um, in wanting to show off uh, the kind of players that you packed and I think that yeah, it draws people in to spend more and more. And the more you spend, I think, you know, it's easier and easier to become more addicted. It's really important to remember what it looks like in a family situation, just what that situation is like when parents discover 
that their kid has spent thousands of pounds that they might not be able to afford at all on a video game with no understanding that many, many thousands of other people have experienced the same issue. It creates absolutely devastating situations in families. To other streamers or YouTubers right now that spends money on the game and their main content is putting money on the game um, for content, for the, for, the, for the viewers, knowing that, you know, we are, as we know, as other content creators, that we know that they have a lot of money through all the channels. They know that they can, they can financially support that kind of lifestyle for content. What responsibility do you think that the YouTubers and streamers have to their audience in terms of really showing them that what they do is not right in any way? As a community, is there a way that we can make steps forward towards something a bit more so it's a really interesting question when we talk about <laughs> the for responsibility of streamers and YouTubers because it certainly has an absolutely huge influence, I think, on young people spending when they're watching, uh, you know, especially younger people watching YouTubers making videos which are essentially, let's get it straight, compilations of often spending literally thousands of pounds on packs and putting the very, very, very best results into a 10 minute highlight video that then young people will go away and try to replicate those results of. And of course, with all those heightened reactions and things that get those viral clips going, smashing TVs and whatnot. What I feel is the answer <laughs> personally here would be for just at the end of a video, just the tiniest little still frame or whatever, just with a disclaimer about the amount of money roughly that has been spent in that pack opening video so that then like i say that 12 year old which watches that 10 minute pack opening video understands that literally thousands or hundreds of pounds have been spent before they go away and try and spend you know 20 pound 40 pound or whatever their birthday money their christmas money and try and get the same results i think having that transparency transparency is the key word here i would like to highlight that i know that's quite a few they speak about it on like live streams but on youtube videos i'm not too sure that it's that common um so i just want to highlight that because i do feel like you know it feels like a personal attack to them because it feels like you're you're, you're almost saying that you're accusing them of being the reason why people may lose thousands upon thousands of pounds which of course is a big thing to say however if we're doing yeah, this yeah, video exactly. If we're doing this video and trying to be impartial about it, we can't ignore this one massive part of the community who does rely and feed off these videos or live streams and they are hooked on watching other people spend packs and it is being ignorant to the fact that they are not incentivized or motivated in any way to do it themselves because of watching these people. I think that it's being very naive to say that there's no link. They're aware of the scale of this issue and the number of what, you know, whether it's adults or kids that are affected by, and just how badly their lives are affected by spending on FIFA packs. I think it's just about having a level of awareness that these things are not all <laughs> sunshine and rainbows when they're making that content and then kind of taking whatever steps they feel are right to kind of bring that across. I mean, as of right now, FIFA is a pecky free game and of course we would like to see a world where you would like to see the fifa auto team pack store be regulated in the same way that a normal standard betting site would be i.e you need proof of id for that yeah it just comes down to that step that in the uk we need loot boxes to be seen as gambling and regulated as such and therefore if you're under the age of 18 you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't be able to buy loot boxes and you shouldn't be able to buy fifa packs and I think that that would mean that EA would have to develop other parts of their game, uh, have microtransactions in, in other ways. I mean, I want to stress as well, when you look at the most successful video games of recent years, loads of them don't, most of them don't have loot boxes at all. Loot boxes are not an essential part at all to making loads of money from a video game. I mean, I talk about Warzone or Fortnite or these games that have completely blown up in recent years and made loads of monies through you know whether that be the sale of skins or whatever it, it's not, like i say it's just not an essential part of the game to have loot boxes in order to make money and i would love to see fifa developed like those games where it doesn't just come down to selling items 
which have a random chance of winning where people have to spend like thousands of pounds to have a chance of getting a team of the year different people have different opinions on this some people will be horrified at the idea that you wouldn't be able to buy a FIFA pack until you're 18 years old but when I've had the experience I've had in my life and when I've heard about other experiences and spoken and had messages from so so many people it's just where my head's at on the issue and thank you for fighting the good fight and for being one of the people who you know goes against this because i think it is kind of a, a taboo thing because i think people really don't want to talk about this topic but it's it's very real it's a very serious thing that people think you know what, the, the, like... the last thing that i was the last thing that i'll say on it well probably the last thing is that i always say that i talk about this issue both for the people that would go on to have issues with spending in fifa packs and particularly with kids and just raising awareness about the fact that these can be dangerous but i always say i want to talk about these issues for all of the people that have gone through these things for all of the people that have had these experiences and still live with the shame now because it's an issue that just isn't talked about enough in many many ways i was just lucky that i had a friend where we could see the scale of this issue we could see how many people were affected johnny i appreciate your time um, where can people find you um, on twitter on youtube or wherever you are um, if they want to find more and discuss with you as well their experiences yeah so my twitter is johnny p7 underscore and yeah i'm always always do my best to to talk to people if they do want to reach out and um give any advice as I can. Thanks for chatting. Always very, very happy to talk about this issue because, yeah, I like to think it does make a real world difference to people. So, yeah. There you go, boys. That is the video. It has been a long one, but I hope that I've covered predominantly all bases here on this topic so that I don't need to talk about this again. The main aim of this video is to really highlight how big this issue is and hopefully to reach out to parents or guardians or young people as well who may need some advice or guidance into realizing how big of a problem this really is. And to every single person that's reached out to me in my emails or DMs about their experiences, I appreciate you and you have made a massive contribution to this video. As of right now, I've not played FIFA since October and I've got absolutely no reason to play this game, not only just due to the current microtransaction practice that is still ongoing, but also because of the gameplay and the, the way the game has gone has become so lazy and so brain dead that it just isn't a game anymore if you do enjoy playing a the game then don't let me tell you otherwise if you enjoy and you get great satisfaction from playing this game the more power to you and of course as again if you are 18 or over i cannot tell you what to do with your money even though i may disagree it is your own money and as long as you're 18 plus you can make your own decisions however i do think that that money could be spent elsewhere in a much better way however if you are below 18 i do hope that this video reaches out to you and may give you a second thought of the next time you may think about putting points on this game and really think is it all worth it thank you all so much for watching this video especially if you're here all the way to the end I, I really, really enjoyed making this one because I, I, I hope that it makes a difference. If it makes one difference to one person that stops putting money in this game on this awful, awful franchise, then that's enough for me. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for 316,000 subscribers. Try and hit 2,500 likes and comment down below your experiences and your thoughts. Thank you very much. Peace out.